Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today with the release of iOS 16, we now have the support for Nintendo Joy-Cons on any iPhone or iPad. So because of that, I actually created this little contraption. This is a little 3D printed design that I made myself. And this turns your little iPhone into a portable gaming device. So this is actually a MagSafe ring in the middle. You can actually buy a bunch of MagSafe rings. These aren't the one I use specifically, but if you stack a bunch of these, you'll have the similar strength to that one. So just buy a bunch of these. I'll have linked in the description. And if you print this 3D model, which I'll be providing for free on printables.com, uh, the link will also be in the description. Um, you can create this for yourself. Or if you actually don't have a printer, you can find some other source online um, to find a way to get this printed. Uh, but anyways, let's get started on how to do this. So the first step is to actually connect the Joy-Cons to your iPhone. Um, and it's pretty simple. If you look at the side of the Joy-Con, there's a little button right here. And you want to just hold that to put it into pairing mode. So I'm going to do it for both the left and right Joy-Cons. Okay, and then just unlock my phone and in Bluetooth, it's going to show up as Joy-Con left and Joy-Con right. So I'm just going to pair it to both of them and yeah, and that's pretty much it. So that's how you pair the Joy-Cons to your iPhone. It's really simple and there's nothing too complicated about it. Uh, and then to attach it to my little grip here. You just slide it through the 3D printed rails um, and it just locks in place. It's not going to fall out. It's really, um, I designed it so that it's like perfect fit. And then you just slide the right one in like that. And you basically have a mini switch of your own. So I'm going to use uh, Genshin Impact as a quick demo. I don't actually play this game, but um, I've seen people play it and it does work with the controller. So while that loads, I'm gonna do a quick size comparison between the Switch and the iPhone version of this. Um, so if you look at it, the Switch seems like it has such a larger display than the iPhone itself. But if you do a like a side-by-side -side comparison, the width is actually the same as the iPhone. And then if you look at the height, uh, the Switch is slightly taller, um, but that's nothing too big of a thing to worry about. And if you look at the Switch's bezels, they're really thick all the way around, while this has pretty much of a be bezel-less display. So if you actually place the Switch on top of it, um, it's pretty much the same size. The version that I'll be having uploaded uh, only supports the 12 to 14, just the regular size. The Mini would fit, um, but I designed it to be a perfect fit for these models. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet with the 14 models because uh, they came out like two days ago by the time I'm filming this video. Uh, so sizing, I'm not too sure about, but hopefully it'll fit. If not, um, if anyone tests it for me, then I'll make some adjustments and we can go on from there. So this is almost done. I'm going to talk about the ergonomics really quickly. This obviously isn't the most comfortable um, way to play it, but then this is essentially the same grip and feel of playing on a Nintendo Switch, except your fingers right here actually have a place to go. Uh, so this was completely intentional, because if you compare it to an Xbox controller here, uh, these two fingers want to be somewhere, and uh, that's kind of where I got this idea from. It's a miniature version of that like design style. And also with the actual Switch, your fingers just end up just resting here, and it's not the exact like most comfortable position. Uh, but I did want to go for the same sizing as the Nintendo Switch. So if you see, it barely peeks out above the um, the top part of the phone, like the build right here. And then if you look at the thickness, it's essentially the same. You don't notice too much of a difference. So that's pretty much why. Um, I went for this type of design and it's really slim so you can just throw it into your bag or actually if you have an old Nintendo Switch case you can actually throw this whole um, grip and Joy-Cons into the bag um, and take it around with you. If there's um, people who want me to design one for the Pro Max versions 
Um, I might consider doing that if this gets enough like views. Um, put a like in the description or on the below the video if you actually want me to uh, develop this project for more phone sizes. This might actually be a really cool um, grip for the iPhone mini, except they're not making that anymore. So I'm just gonna quickly wait for this game to load up and show you how this whole thing works as um, a gaming system. Okay, so the game finally decided to load in um, and as you can see the controls don't work yet and that's because some games um, want you to manually set the controllers. So touchscreen and I'm gonna change that to controller and now you can see I have these little uh, buttons to tell me how everything works. So if I press A, that's actually the leave button, and you can see the right joystick controls um, which position I'm looking at, and then the left one actually controls um, where the character is going. So it's pretty much the same controls as if like you're playing on a controller um, on like an actual device. So like let's say you're playing this on an Xbox controller and an iPad, it's the same controls. This game I don't think it's on a, a Nintendo Switch, so that's why. This is like one reason someone might want to print this and then use it for their own. Um, and it's really easy to use this device because um, everything's just like modular. You can just pull off your phone, do whatever you want, and then uh, it snaps back on when you want to get back into your gaming session. Um, so this is really cool. This is what the back looks like. Um, that's where the magnet is. You can kind of see it in like the light. Uh, the back's completely flush with the Joy-Cons and everything is like held together pretty nicely. Um, like I said, you can actually order the magnets for really cheap. This one doesn't actually use these magnets, but if you stack a bunch of these, uh, obviously facing the right side to your phone, um, you can actually have this strong of a magnet connection. I'll also leave a link where I got this specific magnet. It's um, a little bit stronger and then I put some type of tape over it to protect my phone. And something cool about this is you can actually uh, use it without a case because the magnet's inside of your phone directly. Uh, so this is just the bare phone by itself and you can see it connects to this right here. So that's pretty much it for um, the build and everything. This took me a while to make. If you you can kind of see that this isn't exactly the final, final version. Um, but the printed, the printable version that I put, um, I uploaded online uh, is the final version. You can give me any feedback if you want any changes. Um, this only supports the regular size models. So um, like I said, tell me if you want a full size version. Um, I went through many iterations of this. Like I had to move, um, I actually had this as an asymmetric design so that this could work in any orientation, but now it doesn't work because of the camera bump. So that's just a minor um, user thing, but it looks better in this way. And something cool about this is you can actually um, use it without any Joy-Cons and have like a little bit of a gaming grip. So I mean, I turned off the controls, so it won't work like this, but this is another way you can play the game. It's not exactly comfortable, but it's another way to play um, using this script. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this uh, little 3D printed project that I did, uh, give me a like, subscribe, and tell me um, if you plan on printing it. Send me pictures if you want. Uh, but thank you for watching, and see you guys in the next one. Bye.